Hi, and welcome back to Psychology with Mr. Snyder. Today, our first lesson, Module 1, over the historical development and perspectives of psychology. And here you can see some of my favorite psychology jokes, uh, just to make it seem interesting to you and to get you involved. Learning targets today are to define psychology as a field of study and the four primary goals, how it developed as a science, the perspectives we use today to understand psychology, how it developed as a scientific discipline, the subfields of psychology, research with human and non-human animals, and how psychology basically improves people's lives. So let's get started. How do we define psychology? It is the scientific study of behavior and mental processes. So that is number one definition. you got to know it. It'll be on the final. Uh, now, we need to come up with operational definitions of behavior and mental processes. So behavior is something that is outward. It is movement. It is talking, sleeping, um, heartbeat, digestion. It's anything that can be measured or anything that can be observed. Whereas mental processes are inward. It is the inside perceptions, dreams, uh, thoughts, stuff that's happening cognitively in our head, uh, internal, it cannot be measured or observed. Uh, psychology prevents possible biases from leading to faulty observations, and it also uses precise and careful measurement. And that is how the scientific study uh, plays into psychology. So what are the four goals of psychology? Well, uh, first we have to describe what is happening, and that would be observing a behavior and noting everything about it. Uh, so what is happening? Where is it happening? Who is it happening to? Um, what are they doing when it's happening? What time is it happening? As unbiased as possible, observe and describe what is happening. Uh, in psychology, in the situation. <clears throat> the next goal would be to explain why is this happening. And with the information available, you can come up with a theory, which is a general explanation of a set of facts or observations going on. Uh, prediction is next. Like w We try to predict when will this behavior happen again in the future based on the past behavior and then the last goal is to try to control the behavior how can we change it for the better we change the undesirable behavior into a desirable one now not all psychologists will use all of these goals all this at all at once some of them will some of them won't but these are the four goals of psychology now what are the, how did psychology develop? Well, they've been doing psychology since Aristotle, and uh, it basically comes out of philosophy, but we first try to scientifically study psychology in 1879 in Leipzig, Germany, with Wilhelm Wundt's psychology laboratory. He is considered the father of modern psychology and the structuralism perspective of studying psychology. And I like to say with the uh, popular song a few summers ago, turn down for Wundt. Um, he was the first to attempt to apply these scientific principles to the study of the human mind. He believes that we can break down our consciousness into subjective feelings and objective sensations. So if you were to look at this stapler, how does... We can say it's black, we can say it's metal, we can say it's shiny. We're all observing that the same way. But how does this stapler make us feel? Uh, if you were the guy from Office Space, perhaps somebody stole your stapler and it brings back uh, memories of painful memories, basically. Maybe you love staplers, maybe you love stapling papers. So those are those subjective feelings that we can divide uh, our consciousness into. And we get to this through the process of objective introspection or uh, using our objectivity to examine and measure one's own thoughts and mental activities. They need to be as unbiased as possible, and that is where people would argue that that is impossible uh, because I cannot 
observe someone else's consciousness. Edward Titchener was um, Wundt's student. He's the one that brings psychology and structuralism to America. Margaret Washburn is the first woman to earn a PhD in psychology. These are just some uh, notable landmarks in time. And structuralism ends up dying out in the early 1900s because we find better ways to study psychology. Functionalism is one of those, as proposed by American William James. And he basically wants to know how psychology allows the people to function in the real world, how they adapt to their environment. So function, functionalism, how does it function in your environment? That's pretty easy to remember. It influences or it's influenced by the theory of evolution by Darwin and the idea on natural selection. And then uh, Mary Whitkin Calkins is the she does the earliest research on the human memory and psychology of the self in functionalism. So women have also contributed very early to psychology. Uh, the African-American and Hispanic community have also contributed to psychology. Francis Cecil Sum, uh, Sumner was the first chair of the psychology department at Howard University. Uh, Kenneth and Mamie Clark were two notable African-American research psychologists who applied their studies to uh, the court. It basically went to the courtroom. So they would put out two dolls, a white one and a black one, and ask children to pick up the nice doll or the pretty doll. And a lot of kids picked up the white doll. Even black children picked up the white doll. And if they asked to pick up the dirty doll or the bad doll, kids would then pick up the black doll. And so this this uh, research was actually used in the 1954 decision, Brown versus Board of Education, showing that uh, the negative effects of segregation on African-American children. It is literally turning them into second-class citizens or having them believe that they are second-class citizens. And Jorge Sanchez uh, developed intelligence testing on cultural biases. Uh, that is the Hispanic con contribution to early psychology. Functionalism influenced the modern fields of educational psychology, I.O. psychology, and evolutionary psychology, and we'll get to those in a little bit. Uh, influential approaches. Sigmund Freud has a huge influence on psychology with his theory of psychoanalysis, uh, and this is the unconscious mind is where we repress our most intimate desires and feelings and our most primitive urges and if those try to surface um, and we're not allowed because of uh, society's rules to uh, satisfy those urges, that is how nervous disorders come out. And it's also, he emphasized the importance of early childhood experiences as well. Behaviorism is the other um, idea you need to talk about. And some famous people are Ivan Pavlov and John Watson. Pavlov did his experiment with the dogs and the salivation to learn that a reflex could be conditioned, so salivation being the reflex. John Watson did, rejected the structuralism and functionalism approaches and because we can't know what's going on in someone's mind, and he only wanted to focus on observable behavior, what can be seen and measured. He uh, proved that phobias could be learned, or the fear of something could be learned through the process of conditioning, and his famous experiment is Little Albert, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. Later, He influences and teaches a baby to fear a white rat, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, now we get into the modern perspectives. The psychodynamic perspective is the modern version of psychoanalysis, and it focuses more today on the development of a sense of self and the discovery of the motivation behind a person's behavior rather than just wondering what is in a person's uh, unconscious mind and the sexual motivation behind somebody's behavior. Uh, the behavioral perspective, sometimes called the learning perspective today, remains very influential. B.F. Skinner takes up John Watson's torch and develops the theory of operant conditioning and reinforcement. Uh, it's either behavioral responses are either followed by pleasurable consequences, which make you want to do it again, or unpleasurable, unpleasant consequences, which make you want to not do it again. That would be punishment. 
The humanistic perspective is the third force in psychology. It's a reaction to both the, the, the uh, psychoanalytic theory and behaviorism because both of those say you are based pretty much a victim of your environments and your childhood. Uh, human, humanism, I like to call it the hippie. Like think of it like the hippie, um, and that's probably not the correct term for it, but the hippie way of doing things. That people have free will, the freedom to choose their own destiny. They strive for self-actualization, which is the um, reaching one's full potential as a human being. Early founders are a Abraham Maslow and um, Carl Rogers, and we'll talk about them later as well. The cognitive perspective, cognitive, what's going on in your mind, it focuses on memory, intelligence, perception, thought processes, problem solving, language and learning. Sociocultural perspective uh, focuses on how a person's culture affects their behavior. Um, so a person who grows up African American or female or how minorities, how um, stereotypes and racism and discrimination, how that focuses and changes their behavior and their way of thinking. That is what a sociocultural psychologist would talk about. And then don't confuse that with cross-cultural research because if we do a psychology experiment here in America, it may have different results from a the same experiment in Japan. And so we uh, study those differences between the two cultures, cross-cultural research. And then the last three are your bios, uh, biopsychological perspective, or sometimes just called the biological perspective. Basically attributes a person's behavior to biology inside the body, like neurons, hormones, uh, genetic influences. And it studies the physical structure, function, and development of the nervous system and the brain. Uh, the biopsychosocial is a holistic approach, saying it's uh, it's a person's genetics, it's the behaviors, it's the environment they grow up in, how much stress they're under. You need all of that to explain an individual. And then the evolutionary perspective focuses on the biological basis of universal mental characteristics that all humans share. So an um, evolutionary psychologist would study why why do why do we choose the mates that we do? Why do we choose girls and boys in certain uh, attributes that we're looking for in a mate? Uh, evolutionary psychologists might study that, just as an example. Martin Seligman focuses on positive psychology, shifts away from all of that negative stuff and focuses on a person's well-being, strengths, and their pursuit of happiness. And it's important to remember that out of all these perspectives, no one perspective has all the answers, but it might be better to study one in one situation and another in another situation. And that would be the eclectic perspective. Bits and pieces of different perspectives are used to best fit a particular situation. So the subfields of psychology, you can see here a psychologist has a doctorate degree, undergoes academic training, and chooses the subfields on the right, which we'll talk about the subfields in a few modules from now. A psychiatrist is actually a medical doctor who has specialized in the diagnosis and treatment of psychological disorders. They can prescribe medication to these people. A psychiatric social worker is just someone who has a master's degree, is trained, and they know the impact of mental disorders on a person's life and other environmental conditions like uh, poverty, overcrowding, stress, and drug abuse on an individual. Research, a couple different kinds of research. We have basic versus applied. Basic research is just to get the scientific knowledge gained. How many things a person can hold in their memory at one time. And then applied research would be using information uh, to solve a real world problem. So we could use that information about holding items in short term memory and come up with a new studying method for students. And then psychologists can aim to improve the daily lives of people in the following ways and more. Uh, we can solve and research tough social issues. Human factors psychology focuses on how people can uh, use different 
objects like doorways why are things designed the way they are because they consulted with a human factor psychologist on how a person would best use that thing they can understand developmental issues in childhood and help people work through difficult personal issues and that is all i have for you today be sure to fill out those learning targets answer any or write down any questions and i'll answer them when you get back to class have a great day bye bye